guys didn't come this far just to come this far. What, what do you mean? You, saw? Uh, you know, we we obviously have come a long way, but we didn't get to nine and zero to become nine and one. Um, you know, we came this far. Uh, you know, with a long way to go, and, and that's kind of, that was kind of my message. Is um, we're not satisfied that we've that we've come this far. We we still have a, a long way left in the journey, and uh, that's kind of what I was trying to reiterate. Do you think you're doing better now than you were, say, in the first couple weeks of the season? Yeah, I do. I do think that. Is there like what in particular do you think has gotten better? Um, probably just you know being calmer in the pocket, finding the open guys. Seeing things open instead of waiting, waiting on them, um, stuff like that. Is that a Rose Bowl shirt? No, it's like a motive. It's a sh uh, store up in Ann Arbor called Motivation. Um, but yeah, it's a Rose. I thought it was cool. <laughs> I've had a couple of the seniors uh, compliment you on your leadership skills, and they said that, that has grown. Is it hard because there's like 45 seniors on this team or whatever to be? I don't look at it as as. Okay, if I'm going to be, you know, be a leader, I'm the only one. Um, I think that was that speaks volumes of our team. We can have a lot of leaders. Um, not that there's was it too many chiefs in the tribe. It's not. It's not like that. It's just um, you know whether it's one guy one day or one guy another day. Uh, whoever kind of takes the reins that day, I guess, is uh, is the guy. But it's not challenging or anything. Brian just said that you are more laser focused than he's seen you. Is there? Did, is, is that you though? I mean, are you kind of a laser focused guy all the time? Yeah, I, I just I moved in with him this year. He and I live together this year, so he's probably just seeing that now. But um, and I probably am more so this year than in years past. But um, you know, I, I didn't. You know, once the, the spotlight hit me, it wasn't like okay, time to change who I am now. It was. You know, I always knew once the spotlight hit me, I was um, it was going to be who I was, and, and so that's why I wanted to be ready for it. Jabril said he kind of hides, puts a hat on, so that people don't notice him on campus. Is it a little bit more diff difficult for you at your height? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, pretty recognizable guy, just being so tall. Um, but you know, it, it's it's a compliment. You know, walking around campus and stuff, and if people want to take pictures or um, have a conversation, I mean, it's it's all it's all cool. So. Are you starting to get stopped by people? Yeah, yeah. Happening more? Yeah, de I mean, definitely this year. Um, but it's probably true for a lot of guys on the team. Oh, yeah. Anytime you're nine to zero, the the vibe and the electricity around campus is a lot better than when you're you know, four, four, six, or something freshman year. So. Any weird requests from anybody? Um, Fan interactions that you were like, "What's going on?" <laughs> a lot on social media. Right. I just I, I don't even look at that stuff anymore because um, there's some weird stuff, but. No, in, in person yeah. um, stuff, and you go to Chipotle or something up on campus. It's just cool students that are just happy to see you. So you wanted to prepare yourself for the spotlight for when that time came. What, what did you do specifically to do that? Uh, well, that's something my parents always told me and, and reiterated to me. Um, you know, in high school it was a spotlight, but it wasn't this big. Um, but I always told myself, you know, I, I can't change who I am and once I'm here talking to you guys um, you know it's got to be who I am as a, as a human being and um, so I just tried to you know be the best person I could be um, every day when I was fifth string quarterback and you know now when I'm the starter it's the same guy did they have experience I mean, your grandfather's an athlete right oh, yeah. both both were uh, one was a swimmer at Clemson uh, and the other one was an all-american basketball player at NC State and went played in the NBA when you were fifth string, was there a moment where you didn't think it was going to work out here? You didn't think? Absolutely. Uh, my red shirt year, I was like, okay, I'll just red shirt. Uh, but then when Coach Harbaugh came in, I got buried on the depth chart that spring. And then that red shirt freshman fall camp, uh, I was on the phone with my parents. Basically, was like, okay, I'm out. Uh, let's find a different school. They were on board. They obviously wanted me to stay here, but they were going to support my decision. Um, I had Steve Clarkson um, kind of helping me out, too, on, on where to go. And then one morning I just woke up, and I was about to go talk to Coach. And I just, I don't know, just didn't feel right. Uh, so I said, I'll give it another week. And then I started playing better. And then by the end of camp, I was 
taking reps with the twos. So. Did Harbaugh know you were thinking of leaving? He does now. Oh, uh, he didn't know it. No, time. I didn't. I didn't. Uh, he could probably read my body language at that time. Um, I think Coach Fish knew. I had talked. I had talked to Coach Fish a couple times, but um, they both know now. I've you know I've expressed that to them, and obviously myself and, and those two guys are happy that I did. How didn't close were you to oh, go ahead didn't, didn't one of them kind of talk you a little bit out and say, hey, at least stick around and give it a shot here? Is that... um, well, I mean, everyone saw the HBO special. <laughs> <laughs> there, that wasn't exactly the right. bubbly, hey, stick around. <laughs> uh, Fair enough. That was more, please get out of my face and never come back. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, Coach Harbaugh told me over the summer when we all had our individual meetings, like, hey, you know, you're going to get a shot. So I just believed him. But I, I you know, started to see the, the writing on the wall a little bit first week of camp, but then just said, screw it, I'm going to work as hard as I can. How close were you? Did you, like, walk up here and you were like, okay, I'm going in his office, and you turned back? Or was, was I mean, there I, anything that changed your mind, or was it just random? Uh, I was, I don't know. I, I mean, my dad had reached out to other schools and right. stuff. Uh, so, yeah, those schools were on board. But I don't know. I, I woke up in the dorms during camp and you know, Drake Harris was my roommate and I told a bunch of my teammates that I was out um, but then I woke up the next morning and Drake was like you sure man Are you sure and I guess he kind of I guess maybe Drake talked yeah. him to it a little bit just to give it another week Drake, Drake and Jake so this was more than just a you know a younger guy saying okay I'm done with this this was like wheels yeah, were yeah, motion serious yeah, yeah, it was, yeah it was serious but that's that's all in the past yeah, and, right. and where were you headed I don't know. I don't know. Um, I mean, I had family ties with NC State, and I think that, that was kind of the direction I was going in. But um, it doesn't matter now. I'm here, and everything's awesome. So. In the back of your mind, was Harbaugh's reputation with quarterback something that resonated with you to stick, stick it out? Did that even enter? Yeah, I mean, I knew um, even if I was the fifth-string quarterback, I was going to be the best fifth-string coach quarterback in the country. Um, and I was just able to get to, to number two, and then in which he coaches like a starter and worked out. Have you ever heard the Tom Brady story that sounds very similar to what you're describing, that Lloyd Carr actually thought he was going to transfer, and no, then he came in and said he was going to win the job, essentially? No, I didn't, uh, I didn't, I didn't know about that, but that's cool. Now that you're gaining the claim, obviously, and people know who you are and stuff, how, how do you handle that compared to when you were a Fitzgerald quarterback? Yeah, that's another thing I talked to the team about last night. Uh, one was we didn't come this far just to come this far, but another one was my uncle had texted me um, on Monday, and he was like, you know, how do you stay like the level-headed kid that you are? And I just told myself all the time that it wasn't long ago that he was cussing me out on HBO, and, and I was the fifth-string quarterback and stuff. And, you know, it took a lot of work to get here, but I can go back to, to where I was like that. So um, you just have to stay humble and, and focused and, and hungry to get better every day. Did your All-American NBA playing grandfather have an influence in that realm of dealing with the spotlight and understanding that? Uh, well, unfortunately, when I was fifth fifth or sixth grade, he passed away, but sorry. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I had a close relationship with him, um, but my dad always told me that he didn't know my his dad was an All-American basketball player uh, until he was 19 years old. So, um, you know, I think that a, lot of, a lot of that humbleness comes from uh, my dad's dad, but also my mom's dad as well. I'm going to take a guess that you weren't the only person having those thoughts that first fall camp, that first spring, that I'm out of here. There's probably other guys that were in the same boat. Does that bring you guys closer to know that you didn't leave and you're, yeah, and you're still here? Yeah, I think so, because uh, there's a lot of guys that yeah. did leave. Um, and, a lot of guys that probably thought about it. Right, and, and then there was a lot of guys that thought about it, and, and you know, that first spring ball with Coach, the four-hour practices, the constant cussing out, um, and just you don't, I don't know, you didn't feel worthy to be mm -hmm. like, man, should I really be here at Michigan? Um, but to, to fight through that together and stuff and, and to – Gone through all that this team has gone through um, with my redshirt year, and then with Coach o or, uh, Coach Harbaugh's first year. I think that you know is a huge part to why we're so close. So you're not the only one that had that HBO moment. You're the only one that was called yeah, HBO yeah, HBO yeah, like, yeah. There's, I mean, there's plenty of times that, and that was the the, the part that I was okay with. Um, you know, I, I knew, and, and the guys in the locker room knew that I wasn't the only one that you know was getting that treatment. Um, uh, it was, you know, a lot of them. So, 
you, you can, you've been you take off and run quite a bit. Do you think because of your size, maybe defenses don't think you have wheels, so to speak? I don't know, uh, but I hope that they keep thinking that if they if they do. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I think it, it's more just natural. It's not something I really like work on a whole lot because in practice I'm not live ever. Um, it just kind of is like a natural thing to me. So. Do you like the Roethlisberger comparison? Yeah, they're cool. They're cool. I mean, that's someone I watch a ton of film on. Um, going all the way back with with Steve Clarkson when I was 15 years old, he you know, he was the first one to, to make that comparison, but. You know, I think a lot of people are like, oh, this is your quarterback coach trying to promote you, promote you in the recruiting process. But, um, you know, Coach Fish sees it, Coach Harbaugh sees it, and, and, you know, that's someone I look up to as a football player. How often do you talk to Steve, like, during the season? Once or twice a week. Yeah. He'll give me a call, just talk ball. Uh, we'll talk ball, and then I uh, hope that's not broken. <laughs> No, nope, we're good. We're good. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Steve and I talk all the time. Uh, he's coming to the game next week. He's coming on, coming in on Thursday, so we'll grab dinner and then he'll head out after the game. Well, During the game, do you know sort of calm down verbal as opposed to vice versa? When I, I thought I heard on the broadcast that it's almost like you say, Coach, I got this. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell him that. It's not, it's not so much to calm Coach Harbaugh down. Um, Sorry. Because I, I don't want, I don't want to like come off as like, hey, Coach, chill out. But right. I want to make sure that he knows that I'm calm and collected at all times. And I think I've done that so far. In some way, was that first pass interception almost good? You saw his reaction to it? Yeah. Oh, I mean, I, if I could go back, I, I wouldn't do it again. Right. Um, yeah, I think that was cool to, to come off, and you know, it was ironic that I was pushed right into Coach Harbaugh giving me a hug. Um, so yeah, I think that was a sign, and that you know probably happened for a reason. Well, yeah, yeah, a lot different than the HBO reaction. Can you hold this so I don't drop it? No, I'm kidding. No, do you do you like the spotlight? I mean, you seem very comfortable in it. Yeah, I mean, um, it's not like a like or dislike thing. It's just the, rea the reality of the situation. Um, you know, I had it back in high school, it was small, much smaller, but the the Richmond community is everyone's kind of watching. Um, and, you know, following Russell Wilson and Jake McGee, I kind of had the spotlight of the third guy coming along. But uh, So it's something I've gotten used to, and, and um, you know, it's cool. This Ann Arbor's an unbelievable town, uh, probably the, the best college town in the country, and uh, to you know, be the quarterback in, in this area is, is special. So I'm, I'm enjoying it. Harbaugh said you thought you were beyond your years the other day. You just talked about a lot of adversity for a guy who's in his third year. You feel old. Cool. I do, I are. do. Yeah, I feel like I've been around the block once yeah. or twice. Um, and, you know, that speaks volumes for the guys that have done it with me and then you know, the fourth and fifth year guys too. That you know, I'm not the only one that's been through some adversity. I'm sure everyone has their story on this team. And um, you know, that's why we want this to be the year, you know, for it all to pay off. It seems like you use the word chill a lot, like just chill and chill. Yeah. Is that you kind of? It's funny because... Uh, no, not at all. <laughs> in football it is. In football it is. But, you know, when I'm playing ping pong, like, I'll break a paddle in ping pong. Um, you know, when I was younger, like, I wouldn't talk to my mom when if she would beat me in horse in the, in the backyard. I would just, like, freak out. But with, um, you know, I, I did a lot of work with a, a, my, actually my high school basketball coach who was also um, like, a, like a mindfulness teacher that you know, I, I practiced a ton with him on. Uh, almost like a meditation type thing. Uh, you know, whenever I, we figured out whenever I like click my um, buckle in my my helmet or um, you know lick my fingers before before a snap, that kind of like brings me back to like this chill mode. So in football, like I, I feel like I've kind of mastered it, but I'm still working on like the other stuff. Right. Yeah. Do you like breathing exercises or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Some stuff like that. Um, and just you know, being able to move on from a good play and a bad play in the same, same way.